Hi, it's Dwyer. It is October the 3rd, 2020. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now we've been a bit jilted. I was actually looking forward to that Devin Haney versus Gary Russell fight. After having read the Canelo complaint, I realized that these the zone contracts called for its fighters like Devin Haney to fight a major opponent every other fight. Well, Gary Russell would have been that major opponent. I thought there was a chance that that fight might have turned out like the Gary Russell Johnny Gonzalez fight. And understand, I was a big Gonzalez fan. Right? I thought Russell had the hand speed to more than offset Devin Haney's hand speed. And I thought Russell had the experience against world-class competition to not have him give away the spacing in the fight. Right? I thought Russell was going to set traps. Devin Haney's power to me isn't prodigious. Right? He's more of a stylist than he is a puncher. I thought Gary Russell had a real shot in that fight. Well, apparently Devin Haney's folks must have thought so too because we get the pivot. And it's a major pivot. Now he's fighting Yorkies Gamboa, who is 38 years old. Right? The storyline. This is a promoter's fight. The way they're promoting it is they're saying, hey, you know what? Salido beat Lomachenko. Gamboa beat Salido. Gamboa made it to the 12th round against Gervonta Davis. This is a major opponent. You know what? Gamboa isn't. This fight is an illusion. Right? They're going to have to sell it to you hard. As much as I like to take underdogs, I'm taking the favorite Devin Haney in this fight. I'm expecting Devin Haney to win big. Let's talk about why. You know, Devin Haney has some of the best legs. They're young legs. He's a great athlete in boxing. He moves around the ring, right? He can dart. He can pivot. He can move back. He can move forward. Now, what I want people to realize about Gamboa, who, I'll agree, may have given Terrence Crawford, in my opinion, the best in boxing the toughest moments of his career, right? But understand, Gamboa, when he fought Gervonta Davis, had a decent start against Davis, who was at his absolute best in those first two rounds, right? Davis, though, who's a southpaw, was able to land his jab a bit too much on Gamboa. That struck me as reduced reflexes, right? Either it's a reduced reflex situation or it's part of the strategy. Let him touch me with his jab. Maybe that brings him closer to the pocket for my right hand, right? Gamboa is right-handed. But understand what happened after a promising start against Gervonta Davis. And by the way, Davis keeps improving with every fight. He's sudden against Gamboa. He's accurate. He's throwing combinations. Right? I believe Davis is going to win big over Leo Santa Cruz. We'll do a different video on that. But understand, Gamboa gets knocked down in the second round. Right? He gets hit with two right jabs from Southpaw Davis. Then Davis comes in with the left hook. Gamboa hits the canvas. According to the doctors, he tore his Achilles tendon in his right leg. Now understand, he's a righty. When you're a righty and your best punch is a right hand, that right leg is what you push off of. That's the leg that gets you your power. 
Now, sadly, for Gamboa, and I know people say, hey, eventually Achilles' tendons heal. The fight with Davis took place less than a year ago. It took place December the 28th, 2019. Less than a year ago. Gamboa is on the wrong side of 30 by several years. As I said, he's 38. Now what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to put in the comment section a link to a medical magazine that actually discusses the prognosis for professional athletes suffering torn Achilles tendons. Right? Let me just read from that article. Fewer than half of National Basketball Association, NBA, players who suffer a complete Achilles tendon tear return to play for more than one season. And 39% never return to play at all. Let me repeat that. 39% never return to play at all according to research presented in March at the AAOS meeting. By the way, this article is discussing research done by Drexel University. Let me give a shout out here to Philly, right? Let me quote another sentence from the article. Playing time and performance in the first season after injury were significantly decreased compared to pre-injury levels and compared to matched uninjured controls. In the second season after injury, however, the between group differences were not apparent. Right, put in layman's English, for at least the first year after an Achilles tear, and keep in mind, most NBA players are out of the game by the time they're 38. We're talking about younger guys than Yorkese Gamboa. Right? For at least the first year, there's decreased performance. That leg just doesn't heal that fast from this injury. Right? It just doesn't. So, Against a very mobile Devin Haney, does anyone here expect 38-year-old Yorkese Gamboa to be able to keep up with him? It's not going to happen, folks. Devin Haney has a sitting duck. Devin Haney can roam around the ring knowing that Gamboa can't come find him. When it gets hot, Haney can just step back. Haney can have Gamboa walking into his jab. I know Gamboa is a warrior. I know he gets up off the canvas against Gervonta Davis. By the way, I have the full fight in my favorites folder here. You're going to notice after he gets knocked down, when he stands up, he can't put any weight on the leg. You'll notice he couldn't even really balance himself. It's a complete tear, folks. I get the feeling the only reason he was able to go the distance is he's wearing high-top shoes that are tightly laced. Let's go one step further. Gamboa was really known for explosive power. Hand speed, explosive power. Are you sure that a guy with a rebuilt Achilles tendon is going to have the same power? I don't think so. Haney would also have to stop moving for Gamboa to be able to land his power shot. Keep in mind, Gamboa wasn't able to land a lot of power shots against Gervonta Davis, a slugger who isn't trying to move as much as Devin Haney is going to move. So this fight is an optical illusion. A lot of people are going to look at old films of Yorkie's Gamboa from years ago. And they're going to say, you know what, this guy against some young, relatively untested guy 
should hold his own. Right? They're not going to realize that the fighter they're watching hasn't yet torn his Achilles at 38 years old. Isn't coming back in his first fight against one of the fastest handed and one of the fastest footed young boxers in boxing. Right? The injury makes the difference here. This isn't the Gamboa who beat Salido. This isn't the Gamboa who had Terence Crawford in trouble. No, this is the Gamboa who was in survival mode against Gervonta Davis. I don't think this fight ends well. I like Haney in the fight. Big. I think Haney has a chance at a KO. That's not the way I'm going to play it. I'm just going to take Haney to win. But understand the KO scenario. I know Gamboa has a chin. I know Gamboa has a champion's heart. But when you have fast hands like Haney, if he knows what he's doing, if he gets Gamboa hurt and he goes over there and he starts to bounce and throw flurries, the referee might see too much. The referee might wave it off. Gamboa doesn't have to be dropped to be stopped. Let me say this too. We've seen other fighters look good in their late 30s, early 40s. Luis Ortiz, for example. Folks, those are heavier guys. Right? Remember Dwyer's Law of Relativity. Heavyweights age more slowly. Right? 38 in this division is to me the equivalent of being in your 60s at heavyweight. Right? This division involves fluidity. People moving around the ring. Not guys trying to set up big punches. Unfortunately, I think Yorkie Scamboa is in decline. I believe that decline has been exacerbated by a devastating injury. Folks, a torn Achilles tendon is one of the most devastating injuries a guy can have at any age, much less in his late 30s. This is not the Gary Russell fight. This opponent is not Gary Russell. He's a big name. I don't think he has the game he once did. He'd have a better shot, quite frankly, a year from now than now. You know the way it goes. You're an older fighter. You're wondering, hey, will I ever get another big fight? They come to you with a package. Your leg is healing. Who around you is going to tell you the truth? That it's too soon. That you need to turn down this big money. That you, the boss, paying the checks, the person that the people around you are making money off of. Right? That you can't do it against this young guy who doesn't have your resume. Just because boxers accept fights doesn't mean that boxers are ready for them. I don't believe less than a year after surgery for a complete tear of his right Achilles tendon that Yorkie Scambo is ready for this fight. I like Devin Haney. I'm expecting Haney to put on a show. Haney knows Gamboa's secret. Right? Gamboa will not be able to move. Haney must have seen how many times Gervonta Davis landed his jab. Haney knows he can live off that jab outmove, outmaneuver Gamboa, come in with hard hits, Gamboa is not going to be able to counter. Understand, Gamboa at his best was an ambush fighter. Hard to do an ambush when you can't move that well. Also, don't be fooled by fighters coming out, adrenaline's flowing all over the place, everyone's told them they can't do it, they're going to prove all the critics wrong, 
first round, second round, I'm sure Gambo is going to try to move well. I'm sure there are going to be people, maybe the announcers, saying, hey, look, Gamboa is proving the critics wrong. You and I know the real fight doesn't start until the fatigue starts to set in. The real fight doesn't start until the adrenaline wears off. Right? The third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, I'm expecting those to be all Devin Haney. I like unbeaten Devin Haney big in this one. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.